With so many legends and strats in the game, it can be tough to always know how to react when you come across a certain enemy. But every legend has clear ways to counter them, and understanding how to do just that will have you coming out on top so much more. What's up guys, it's Valued, and today we're going to take a look at how to counter every legend in Apex. And by the end of this video, you will have an approach to take down every single legend. So, let's get right into it. Where better to start than with a pick that we're all still adjusting to having in the game, Ash. Her portal changes the way we think about how quickly and quietly a team can relocate themselves, and this is her biggest strength. The best way to handle this is to play aggressively around the enemy Ash portal. Tons of Ashes will ult their team into a building or behind a rock to get themselves in a better position, and it's important that you don't let them get their bearings and secure their lines of sight. If you see an ash portaling to a place near you, throw grenades, hold aggressive lines of sight, and do not let that squad take control of your zone. Most players will shy away from enemy portals and just give up so much space, when often it's best to defend yourself right away with a little aggression. As we all know, Bloodhound Scan is what makes them so desirable, so playing around this when you come across one is a must. Keep an eye out for the orange pulse if you're even in range for it, and if you do get scanned, adjust your play knowing that you've been spotted. Juking with your outline by abruptly changing direction right when the scan wears off, or being careful not to peek when you're revealing and easy to line shots up on. This is a skill we think we understand well, but manipulating the info that you give your enemies and actually adjusting your play to throw enemies off is something that so many players don't do enough. Soaring our way up next is Valkyrie. I love playing this legend and permanently kiting enemies around tall buildings. Her ability to take height quickly makes her really tough to play against, but the most important thing is to not get caught up trying to chase her. Protect where she wants to go and be patient with tracking her down. If you constantly let her kite you around up and down buildings, she's gonna have the upper hand on you constantly. Her VTOL jets are super loud, so you should just track her with your ears, looking to catch her by surprise and take her down before she can fly away again. Speaking of audio cues, Octane is a walking noisemaker at this point. Between his stim and his jump pad, you can hear him coming in most situations. It's important to always be keeping an ear out in general, but especially when hearing an Octane who's blazing his way into a fight. When you do know he's coming, don't be afraid to step up and hit him for big damage. A lot of Octane players will let themselves get pretty low from using Stim, and they get feeling pretty confident as they sprint into a fight. The last thing they expect you to do is step up and hit them for big damage, and catching them by surprise like this can often completely take them out of the fight or lead to a quick knock. And if you aren't feeling comfortable in your shot enough to step up and challenge that Octane, then it's time for you to hop into Aim Lab. Whether you're practicing hitting your flick shots with a shoddy on that over-aggressive Octane, or trying to track one sprinting across a field, this game has a ton of drills for every type of training. But in my opinion, the best part is all the stat tracking that you get after the fact, giving you all the details you need to make adjustments, improve, and then track your improvement. Everybody benefits from aim training, and if you're looking to take your aim to the next level, make sure to check out Aim Lab for free in the top link in the description below. All right, guys, moving on, we have the big brother himself, Gibraltar. Countering him is all about playing around his bubble. If you can get him to burn it preemptively, you can make him so much less powerful. From just lasering him or his team to throwing some solid nades or a bang ultimate, making Gibby feel unsafe so he has to pop his bubble early can be a huge momentum swing. Now, in the other side, if he holds his bubble until the perfect moment, you have to be comfortable bubble fighting effectively. If you go peeking him and his squad with an R99 and bad movement around the bubble, you're gonna lose almost every time. Understanding the strengths of shotties here, being comfortable weaving in and out of the bubble, and playing well with your team are all huge components of winning these fights. Just know you should be looking to avoid these situations as much as you can, and always look to play around the window where Gibby doesn't have his bubble off cooldown. Now, if you see a knuckle cluster, be prepared for the bombardment. Fuse is up next, and the best advice I can give for playing against him is to recognize early in a fight when a fuse is present and do your best not to bunch up with your squad or get stuck in a bad position. 
If you can avoid taking a bunch of damage from his throwables and abilities, he loses a ton of the pressure he can put out. And avoiding getting three man stuck in his ultimate is a must. Now, if you do end up in the ring of fire, look for some height or an angle to jump over the fire. Staying in the ring keeps you on his scan, and hopping out of it quickly without taking a bunch of fire damage can really negate Fuse's effectiveness. Moving on to Watson, make sure you're destroying all of her stuff. It sounds obvious, but keeping her fences and ultimate down is how you keep her down. Not allowing her to use a leftover fence to make a quick connection or get a bunch of value out of her ult is the best way to go about countering Watson. With her ult stopping nades, you're gonna have to do a lot of this destruction with your weapons, so be proactive about shooting her structures. Good Watson players are always looking for a good ult placement or keeping a cheeky fence post up to make a play, so do your best to thwart her plans any way you can. The Loot Queen Loba is next, and countering her is all about reading her moves. Loba's ultimate and tactical are very predictable. Her bracelet has an audio and visual trail that lets you predict where she's headed if she teleports, and her black market doing the same with every item it picks up. If you hear a black market being used nearby, you should instantly look to find them as this can be a great way to catch a team off guard. They're likely obsessed with the loot they're choosing from, so rather than playing it slowly and waiting for them to loot, be aggressive and see if you can get a cheesy knock or two. Next up, we have Caustic, one of my mains. And my number one tip for playing against this guy is to respect the gas. If he throws down his ultimate or has an area locked down with traps, don't get caught hanging around. The damage stacks fast, and before you know it, you can be going down without losing a single point of shields. Don't be afraid to give up a building or reposition if a Caustic decides to gas up the place. Staying mobile and not forcing fights against Caustic is key. Be patient and force him to have to push you rather than you having to run into his setup. Now, a Rampart is similar to Caustic in that you don't want to be running into their setup. If she has a bunch of barriers, she can be a force to break off a power position. So rather than doing that, force her to leave it. Most positions are going to be out of zone soon, and she can't stay up there forever. Don't get caught overforcing on a rampart with a good setup. Look to deal some poke damage or maybe nade the barriers for an advantage, but if she isn't budging, then focus on having a good position for when she has to move. Now, I know, I know, this can be frustrating to deal with because she wants you to push her in many cases along with all the other setup focused legends. So your best bet to coming out on top is to wait until she has to get mobile or if you're not gonna be patient enough, throw some grenades to break her setup. Onto a more mobile option, Wraith is one we all need to know how to play around. Shutting down a good Wraith is all about tracking her and playing around her plays. If you catch her going for a portal, be ready to demolish her disoriented team right as they come through. And if you see her going for an aggressive into the void or portal, be ready to hit her for big damage when she comes out. Similar to Ash, you don't want to give Wraith and her squad time to get their bearings in lockdown lines of sight after they portal. Keep in mind, if Wraith tries to go for a kidnap play or just an aggressive tactical use, shut some doors on her. You can actually trap an overextended Wraith in buildings pretty easily by abusing her inability to interact while in the void. Speaking of mobility, playing patient around it is how you should handle the next legend. Pathfinder can pull off some pretty crazy stuff with his grapple, and it's easy to get caught off guard by him soaring over your head or challenging you with a crazy fast slide. Rather than looking to track him through his grapple movement, play patiently and predict his movement so you're ready to fry him when he lands. Unless he hits some crazy shots on you, he won't be dealing damage until he slows down a bit, so just be patient and don't get flustered when he comes whipping into a fight. Mirage is an interesting legend to counter, because his entire kit is about trying to confuse you. It's important to understand where the real Mirage is before he gets the chance to ult. You can use his clone placement on his tactical to make some educated guesses on where he is. And if you track his clone movement after his ultimate, you can also keep tabs on him even after he goes invisible. It's important not to waste a whole clip into his clones because this is where a lot of mirages will look to turn the fight. Be patient and make sure you're prepared to hit your shots when you have the opportunity. This will have you putting him down fast in fights and keeping him from finding those cheesy advantages. Up next is the surveillance expert himself, Crypto. Now, Crypto can be really strong, but if his drone is dead, he's pretty useless. So if you hear that thing buzzing around, always look to kill it. 
This will keep you from showing up on his scans and will keep him from setting up any EMP plays on your squad. A lot of players that I see will ignore the drone, focusing on the fight developing in front of them, but guys, trust me, do yourself a favor, take the couple seconds to destroy it, and you will instantly make Crypto a non-factor with his abilities in the next fight. Cause trust me, we all know how it feels to get EMP'd by a drone that we knew was there. So save yourself the stress and just shoot it down. Bangalore is up next, and the key to repelling her onslaught is playing around her smokes. These are how all good Bangalore players navigate fights effectively, and you should assume they're looking for digital threat sites to have equipped as soon as possible. With this in mind, you have got to stay out of the smokes. You should assume that Bang has a digi threat and can see you at all times. And guys, if you get caught in a tussle with her in the middle of a smoke with her double time passive and a digi threat, good luck winning that one. So do yourself a favor and stay outside of her smokes and force her to fight without that extra cover. On to Revenant, thwarting him is all about playing effectively around his death totem. If you hear a team toteming towards you, you should have two specific goals in mind. First, find out where the totem is. Whether you use the audio of their push or you have a wide angle on the rest of your squad that lets you see the totem location, knowing where they're gonna be sent back to is key. And second is to step up and send them back to the totem. If you play safe, letting them get a bunch of damage off and have all the time in the world to port back to the totem, this ability will single-handedly beat you in fights. You just have to get through a bar of white health to send them back. So hit a couple big shots, send them back, and then use your info on where the totem is to launch a counterattack to prepare for the real push. Floating up into our next spot, we have Horizon. Her ultimate is by far the biggest thing you need to counter, because a good black hole can wipe your whole squad. You should always look to not be clumped up so she can't hit more than one of you, but if she does get a decent black hole, shoot it. If you can get your whole squad to help it, it will go down fast. Shooting Newt for 175 damage will destroy the black hole, and this is often the quickest and safest way to make it out alive. Not to mention, killing this thing fast can really throw the horizon off. They expect you to be trapped in a vortex, but suddenly you're completely free and ready to fry. Playing around Seer can be a bit off because he has so much info gathered. If you're near a Seer, you should assume he's checking his heartbeat sensor for you actively. So trying to rat isn't the move. And if he has his ult down, if you're within that zone and not crouched or crouch walking, you're gonna be revealed. So the key should be to avoid his heartbeat range or getting caught in his ultimate. But if you do, make decisive choices. It's not a bad idea to instantly back up and wait for the ult to go down, or shoot it if he threw it in the open. Don't try to play too slow, because he will find you and converge on you with his squad. And to finish off the list, we have Lifeline. Her drone is where all her power comes from, so playing around her drone options is the best way to counter her. If you get a knock, you need to play fast, or at least keep tabs on the Lifeline's location. If she gets the chance to throw down her bot and get a free res, her value is really high. But if she doesn't get good use of her drone, she becomes much less of a problem. I like to make sure I thirst my kills if it's a slower fight, and I know there's a lifeline. It's just a bit of extra protection from her getting that teammate up to swing the fight in their favor. Alrighty guys, and that's gonna do it. While I couldn't cover every way to counter each legend, I know I covered at least one key way to come out on top against all of them. If you keep these tips in mind, the next time you run across that pick that's been giving you a hard time, I know you will win. As always guys, it's been your boy Valued. Let me know in the comments below which tip is going to help you take down your arch nemesis, and I'll see you guys in the next one.